So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I, um, I don't just collect one six scale figures. Um, they are predominantly what I collect, but I also collect 12 scale uh, figures, particularly SH figure arts, mainly Star Wars. But um, last year I went back and I started collecting the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe line, but I had to stop because it was just getting way too expensive to get some of those niche figures. I did see this classified series launch a couple of years ago and I passed. However, I've since seen some pre-orders go up on Big Bad Toy Store and I had to get them. Um, so I was passing a, a comic store in Adelaide recently and I saw this guy, he was $39.99. A bit pricey, but I thought I'd grab him and I have to say, so far I'm impressed. Bit different from what I'm used to with G.I. Joe in terms of the um, the box. Normally it's a carded figure and you have that nice artwork. There is some artwork here on the right which is not too bad, following around to the side. And then on the back, um, this is a nice splash design, but I think I would have preferred the old gridded system so you can see what figures are, are coming forward in the line. And then on the side, this is number four, although technically it's number five because there's a zero zero and that was a um, exclusive Snake Eyes figure. I can forget getting him. He's just going for ridiculous prices now. Um, and then here there's some symbols which you can decode on their website and it's kind of like their bio. So a bit of fun there. This one's obviously Duke. Um, nice big window display at the front. So I have to say so far, I'm impressed. Let's crack him open and take a look. Okay, here he is out of the box with all of his accessories. Let's take a closer look. So first off, he comes with this assault rifle. Uh, it's just a solid piece of plastic. It's got this gold detailing and this um, blue plasma effect at the front. I think they're going for a bit of a futuristic look here. Um, it's not really to my taste, but it's not too bad. And he also comes with a sidearm, uh, keeping with that same futuristic look, gold detailing across the top and then he comes with a side pouch uh, something which I've always liked about the G.I. Joe figures um, in the 80s and 90s was the ability to peg in the backpacks and that's something which they've continued on in the classified series and I really like that but in addition to the backpacks there's also a few other bits and pieces this for example just pegs into his belt um, it's just at the back here and that just pegs in very nice. And then finally the backpack. I do like the backpack. Uh, the sculpt on it is quite nice. Um, the paint apps are a little bit shit around the shovel here. You can see that the green has actually gone onto the shovel, but you know, can't be too critical. And he has these flasks on the side all sculpted in. Yeah, it's quite nice. And again, that just pegs straight into the back. Just like the old school figures. I really like that, it's a nice touch that they kept that up. Um, so now that I've got the figure in hand, let's have a closer look at the sculpt. Uh, to me, I can't really comment, he looks like Ivan Drago. Um, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. When I had Duke when I was a kid, I can't really recall what he looked like. I didn't watch the uh, the cartoons or read the comics, um, but I think they've gone for a, um, a more cartoon look here. And it looks pretty good. He's got like a scar across his forehead there. You can see the blue eyes. Not bad at all. And then moving down to the, the body, he's got this um, military type shirt. Uh, he's got a badge um, on his chest there. Yep, his sleeves are rolled up as like it was with the classic style. Uh, his gloves so just straightforward. Paint apps are really shit here. Look at that. The, uh, the orange watch is actually all over his skin. Yeah, it's pretty, sh pretty poor. Some QC issues there. Um, and moving around to the back. The uh, sculpting is really nice in the trousers, uh, these military fatigues that he's got on. The pockets are all done really well. I'm not too sure about these shin guards that he's got going on. It just screams futuristic. I, I think that's what they were going for, so you know, they've achieved it, but it's not really to my liking. And then the boots are all sculpted, uh, just the one shade of brown. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. And then he also has a few, I guess, additional accessories. The belt, although it doesn't come off, um, it is completely movable, all one piece. And he has his strap here for his pistol on his leg. Let's put that in. 
I'm really liking that with the, uh, this classified figure. Um, the fact that you can put most of the accessories actually on the figure, that's really cool. And then he also has this um, strap across his chest here. And again, looks like some type of, I don't know, futuristic communication device or something they've got going on there. Okay, articulation. Articulation is really, really good. And that was something which the figures from the 80s were really renowned for. Those O-ring figures, they had great articulation um, compared to you know, the Motu figures or whatever else where they were competing with at the time. It was just unseen. They didn't. There was nothing else like it. So I think to bring these into a um, six inch figure, they're going to have to adhere to that. They're going to have to really complement the figure with some great articulation. And they really, really have. He's got this uh, butterfly joint at the shoulder. <laughs> so you can get um, quite a bit of movement. A swivel at the bicep, double jointed elbow, swivel at the wrist. And then at the waist, serious ab crunch going on there. It's really, really cool. And he's also got a complete rotation. Just take that off. Uh, the head, you get a full 360 and some up and down. Um, I think there's a peg in the top of the neck and in the bottom of the neck there because you can actually move the neck as well. And then moving down to uh, the legs, he has this um, this pull out. If you are familiar with SH Figure Arts, a lot of their figures have that. Uh, it's not as predominant here, but it is there definitely. You get some swivel at the thigh, double jointed knee. Um, and then he also has some rotation or some swivel at the shin or the boot. And then he has, really don't know how to describe this. It's kind of like a rocker, but it rocks from uh, side to side rather than front to back. It's really weird. And this this actually has some issues, this particular figure. Um, I think it's just a QC issue that they've got. It doesn't actually stand up correctly because he's foot doesn't actually sit flush so yeah all in all really nice figure um really pleased with these figures uh, i do plan on getting some more i've already pre-ordered a, a whole bunch uh, they are difficult to get in australia but um i'll see how it goes um maybe i'll do a few more reviews So my final thoughts on the G.I. Joe Classified Series Duke. I have to say, this is the first in my collection, but it won't be the last. I'm already all in on this line. A lot of fun. I really like the throwback to the old 80s figures with those backpack pegs. Uh, scaled up, but still looks like the original figures. This one does have some QC issues, mainly with the paint apps and that left foot, but to be honest, for a $40 figure, I can't really complain. Not a huge fan of the futuristic tone that they've given the weapons and the shin pads, but I am aware that Hasbro have released a alternate variant of this guy and they've toned that down. So I'll definitely be grabbing him and I might do an update to this review. But overall, really, really pleased. Let me know what you think, like, subscribe. Do you wanna see more of these reviews? Because I'll definitely be getting more of these figures. Oh,